guys, it's Izzy and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering all of your questions about my disability. Now, I get a lot of questions over literally every social media platform and also in real life. So I probably won't answer them all in today's video. However, I asked on Instagram for a few questions. So I'm just going to be answering the ones that you sent through. So the first question is, do you like making content about your disability? Now this one I kind of have two answers for, yes and no. I really enjoy sharing my story online and creating awareness for disabilities and everything like that. However, sometimes I do feel like a little bit pressured that I kind of have to maintain like posting about my disability and there are a lot of avenues of other content ideas that I would love to be able to go down but I kind of feel like I can't because my audience is all kind of here for disability themed videos and every time I do try and like not do that and do something else I feel like you guys don't like it so yeah I do like creating content however I do wish I could kind of broaden the topics that I do speak about on my channel into more things that I'm really really interested in such as like makeup. The next one is at what point did you find yourself like happy with your body? I was really happy with my body like straight away obviously being like seven there weren't really an issue so straight away I was like fine. However when I became a teenager so maybe like 13, 14 that's when kind of my insecurities came and over time I think I've kind of just grown out of that. Now I'm not too insecure about my disability it's just it is what it is and I just kind of get on with it. Um, so to answer the question, at what point did I find myself happier? Probably when I was about 15 or 16, but I wasn't always unhappy. You get what I mean? How long did it take you to get used to having no hands? I think even to this day, it probably, I'm still getting used to it. And I think I always will be getting used to it. As I grow up and I get older, there are new things that I need to be able to do. For instance, at the moment, I'm really trying to focus on making things myself like food and obviously for a lot of that you need hands <laughs> and it's flipping hard without so yeah I think I will always be getting used to it um as I come to a new obstacle in my life as I get older um I have to do more things so the next one is has it restricted you now I would definitely have to say yes I think I'd be completely lying if I said no however as much as it's restricted me I think it's enabled me to do a lot of things I have gained so many opportunities because of my disability I think I've got all the confidence I have today because of my disability I really don't think I'd be as confident as I am today if I didn't have the good old disability um but yeah it has restricted me there are quite a few things that throughout my life I've been like oh I wish I could do that but I haven't been able to do I can't think of an example off the top of my head right now um, but yeah there are a few things that it has restricted me to be able to do but nothing too major a lot of people always ask is it hard to do my makeup no it's not um, I think the same way someone would learn to do their makeup with their hands, I've learned to do it without my hands. I never did my makeup before I got ill because I was seven, so I've learned it the entire way without having arms or hands, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's that tricky. There are certain elements, don't get me wrong, that are really hard, such as like false eyelashes. But other than that, no, it's really not too tricky. Now that you have your sea legs, do you think you'll be comfy wearing longer trousers? Yes. Now I have actually bought some full length trousers. I actually realised I can wear joggers, which is absolutely evolutionary. Um, love a good pair of joggers. And they are full length. I feel like personally I look weird in full length trousers because I'm really not used to it. And with having the sea legs, I look like normal. I hate that word, but inverted comments. Um, I look normal from the way, waist down whilst wearing like joggers or stuff, so it's really, really weird for me. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely more confident wearing things like that now because with the blades, I couldn't really wear full length trousers because obviously they didn't have a fur at the bottom. Do you ever wish you had different or less limbs amputated to make your life easier? Um, yes. I see people that have like just like their hand amputated or stuff, and I'm like, mate. <laughs> that would be a piece of cake that to me is like abled bodied because like wow <laughs> so yeah I do think it'd be easier sometimes however I try not to be like too in a headset that's like that because it's just not going to help anybody at the end of the day this is what I have been left with so I've just kind of got to deal with it but it would 100% be easier if I had less limbs amputated although I'm not sure if I had the choice between legs and arms which I'd pick Okay, so the next one. What's the prejudice you wish society would get rid of surrounding amputees? Um, there are a lot. I think for the entire disabled community, there are loads of prejudices and 
um, I've spoken about this before, it's just we don't have equality in this world. Um, we are not seen as equal. Um, so I'd get rid of that. Um, everybody, no matter what in the world, deserves to be equal. Um, and that shouldn't be judged on someone's physical appearance. So yeah, that's one. Um, I would probably take away the stigma that people with a disability or amputees are like useless because do I look useless to you? Like, come on. Come on. I think then I wouldn't have to prove myself and it just make my life ten times easier. Do you play sports slash workout? Okay, so at the moment I don't have like a sport I play. I stopped doing trampolining when I swapped to my sea legs because I didn't really like swapping back into my blades. But I do work out. I go to the gym at the moment. I'm doing Chloe Ting's workouts. So yeah, I do work out and I think with a, like a sports team, I never really enjoyed it. I didn't want to be on an old disabled team because me personally, I don't see myself as being disabled. So I never wanted to be on a disabled sports team. But then I also kind of can't fit in with the able-bodied people so I never did a sport in a team. Okay so a lot of people over the years have asked what I look like in my dreams whether I'm able-bodied or um, I'm an amputee and to be completely honest I have no flipping clue. I've tried to like monitor this for ages since I realised that people wanted to know this and I just don't know I don't think I see myself in my dreams like not to notice so I have no idea if I dream um if I'm an amputee or not in them so I'm sorry um <laughs> for any of the questions that how do you do this how do you do this I'll link up my whole entire playlist that's how I do things as an amputee it's got literally hundreds of things in it and I didn't want to take up time in this video explaining them because we've done it before what are the strangest things people assumed you couldn't do because of your disability um I think people think that like I have quite a long length of my arm left and people seem to think that I just like can't move my arms sometimes so like I'm not going to be able to feed myself and I'm like well if I can reach my mouth surely I could put food in my mouth that's one that always baffles me because it's never been a question as to whether I would personally feed myself or not um yeah I just always have done that so that's one that I'm like really really and like people will be like I'll post something on Instagram. How have you put? How have you posted this? And I'm like, like this. For like everything to me, it just is so simple and straightforward because it's I live it. But to other people, I do get asked the most bizarre questions ever. But how do you feed yourself? Is definitely the most bizarre one. Or like someone else feed you? Like no. Is there any limitation that you notice the most, or are you used to your disability? I think to be honest, I'm used to it by now. There's nothing that I really get to the point where I'm like. Ugh. I was saying to mum the other day though, I'd love to be able to like crouch on the floor because if you didn't know, I have a really little dog, she's called Coco and I have to literally like bend upside down if she's on the floor to stroke her and then I get like blood rush to my head and almost like collapse. <laughs> Slightly dramatic. Um, but no, I was saying to my mum, I would love to be able to like crouch on the floor um, to be able to stroke Coco. So that's probably one limitation that I'd love to be able to do because who doesn't want to stroke a little dog? What are some things someone would have to do for you or are you quite independent? The only thing I can think of that somebody else would have to do for me is my hair. If I want to have it in a ponytail, I can do it how it is today, but if I want it tied off, then I'd have to get somebody else to help me with that. But other than that, I mean, there's obviously like if I want a light bulb changed or odd things like that, but the main one is that. Has it changed over the last nine years and what's helped you adjust? So obviously as I've got older, I've gained more skills, but as I get older throughout my life, I have more challenges put towards me because there are more things I need to be able to do. Um, so yeah, it has changed over the last nine years. At the start, I couldn't wear prosthetics because I had to wait for my, um, my limbs to heal. So yeah, prosthetics just changed everything. Getting sea legs has then changed everything. And yeah, what helped me in the first few months um, definitely an electric wheelchair, I used to have that, and it used to mean that I could get all around where I live, and if I wanted to go out, um, and all around downstairs of my house, so, yeah. What advice would you give someone who is a recent amputee or has a disability? If you do fit into either of these categories, then I'd highly, highly, highly recommend you just listen to me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, if you are a recent amputee or someone with a disability, I would just like to say that it may all seem negative at the start and it may seem like an impossible road ahead. I know it did for me um, being so young. I knew I had so much of my life ahead of me and was I going to be able to kind of do it was a major question. However, 
it is possible, it is difficult, but definitely possible. So I would really just recommend sticking through it, keep trying, it will take certain different methods and different tries, but you can get there in the end. Sorry if the camera angle changed, I ran out of storage, but let's keep going. Do you have to take any medication? No, I do not have to take any medication. At the start I did used to have to take medication, I'm pretty sure it was just like painkillers strong painkillers I can't really remember however now no I don't need to take medication I am perfectly healthy now I think a lot of misconceptions about meningitis people think that I like now live with it no I don't I'm completely healthy now and like normal and um, it's just the amputations that I have been left with are you on any sort of benefit due to a disability I do get a disability living allowance from the government if that's your question I think it's called disability living allowance Basically because there's things we have to do, things I have to buy, um, made my life more expensive. What was something you thought would be hard but turned out not to be? Um, probably washing my hair. For ages I didn't wash my own hair, my mum helped me. But then now I just do it and I'm like, Izzy, will you be lazy? Because <laughs> that was so easy. Someone's asked what's your favourite car? Now I know this has absolutely nothing to do with this Q&A, but I'm going to answer this really quickly. So as I'm filming this, I went to see my car. I went to see my car um, and I am waiting currently to actually pick it up. It will be any day now really and I'm a bit more excited in my entire life. So my favourite car is my car which I'm not telling you what it is or what colour it is or anything. You have to wait and see the car videos that will be coming sooner than you expect. Okay, how do you stay active? Like I love Chloe Ting but is it hard to modify those workouts? Now there is a particular Chloe Ting workout that I have been doing that you'll see because I'm filming it for a video at the moment. Chloe Ting has this one workout. I can do like every move in it so it's great but a lot of set workouts like that I do have to adapt. Chloe's one workout that I found is the only one that I don't have to do but a lot of them do include moves that I can't do so I just kind of swap them for something that I can do. For instance if they're doing a plank variation that I can't do I'll just do a normal plank. What experiences have you got from being an amputee that you wouldn't have got if you couldn't? Um, my YouTube channel, everything that I've got because of my YouTube channel, I wouldn't have been flown to Paris to film makeup videos, I would not have been flown to America to do a TEDx talk, I would not have met half the people that I have met, I wouldn't have the confidence, literally, so there are quite a lot and you can tell me all you want, that, that's not fair that I get more experiences, but it is. <laughs> Do you ever get phantom pain problems? No, I don't. I've never actually got phantom pain, which I'm pretty sure is great. <laughs> do you ever do extra research about places to make sure they're accessible? Yes, I actually do. Everywhere is actually supposed to be accessible. Like, I'm pretty sure it's a regulation. However, a lot of the time when I'm going somewhere new, I do just check because I don't want to get there. And the stairs, I haven't expected there to be there. I'd rather research and know that I will have to go upstairs. But that's fine, but just have a bit of pre-warning. Are you friends with other quadruple amputees or just amputees? This is quite a common misconception. I feel like people think that because I'm an amputee, all my friends are going to be amputees, and that's not really the case. There are a few other amputees I know, some quadruple, some like just amputees, double or whatever. However, I wouldn't say I'm like busy mates with them. Although we have things in common, there are still a lot of things we don't have in common. Um, so yeah, just because someone's an amputee doesn't mean I'm going to be friends with them. So I kind of just pick my friends on personality rather than if they're an amputee or not. So yeah, I know of people that are an amputee, but I wouldn't say I'm like close friends with anyone. Would you ever consider using prosthetic arms ever again? No, I would not. I hated them. However, if I did come to a stage in my life where there was something difficult that I really wanted to be able to do, then yes, I would try them again. And the last one I'm going to answer, even though there's so many more, is have you started to learn to drive yet? Um, no, I haven't as of filming this. My car got massively delayed because of corona. And then as of right now, the driving instructors aren't actually allowed to operate yet. Hopefully the whole country is opening back up soon. My car is almost here and my driving instructor is lined up, ready to go. Hopefully going into July, I should be able to start learning to drive. Anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy this Q&A. If you do have any more questions, then either leave them in the comments or maybe wait and see if I put this on my story again because I'd be up for doing a part two because I didn't even get through half the questions today. If you did enjoy this video then make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye!